<laughs> oh, he's got a throne now? <laughs> Who does he think he is? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind when he's not here and can't hear what I'm saying. Hey, what's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the fans project Severo. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. I have to move him off to the side because this box is rather large. So right up front here, you have Severo sitting in his throne of awesome. Right here, you have Severo with Pateo. Pate I'm just trying really hard to not call him Potato and Kotov on the side of the box here. You have Grimlock or Severo all armed up and ready to make sure somebody has a bad day. On the other side of the box here, you have him in his dino mode. On the top of the box, you have the dino mode again. On the bottom of the box, you just have fierce gaze. On the back of the box, you have your obligatory product shots. Does this, that, the other. You have your warning. Please don't eat anything in this box. That could be very, very bad for you. Uh, the front flap here can open up, and in here is where the figure will sit. And you have more product shots on the inside flap right there. And that's basically it for the packaging. So moving right along, here we have Severo, which is the next in Fans Projects line of Dinobots. And this is their Grimlock, as you can see. Now, there are two separate editions of this figure that have been released. There is a basic edition and there is a DX or deluxe edition. So I'm going to run down what you get with each right off the bat, just to get out of the way so you know what you're getting yourself into and, you know, which one you would rather spend your money on. So with the uh, basic edition of this figure, you're obviously going to get Severo himself. You're going to get his little weapon dude. You're going to get his... G1 gun, right there. You're going to get his sword, and you're going to get the two Gatling guns. And this is what you get with the basic edition of this figure. Now, if you go in on the uh, DX or Deluxe edition, you're going to get a second little weapon dude. You're going to get a crown, and you're going to get the big throne. And that is what you get with the Deluxe Edition. So, there you go. And we'll go into everything in more detail as we continue on with the review. But I just want to get that out of the way right off the bat here. Just so you know what's what. There we go. So now let's take a look at Severo himself. So here he is in his dino mode. And um, I do have to say, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of this T-Rex mode. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just, I don't know, he just looks kind of, I think it's just the shape of him, he's just like oddly shaped to me, like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm not the biggest fan of his T-Rex mode, I mean, it's, it's grown on me, I actually really didn't like it when I first transformed him, but, it, you know, I'm, I'm still not the biggest fan of it, but it's, it's grown on me a little bit, but, anyway, we'll get in close here so you can see the details, you do get some nice molded details there in the head, you do get some silver paint right up top here, a little bit of red. Uh, the teeth are picked out in silver, which is very nice. Uh, the eyes are already transclear in plastic, and you can see they do, they do light pipe a little bit. The only way to get the eyes to light pipe is if you just kind of shine the light through one eye and have it come out the other one, because obviously there's nothing up top for the light to come through. So that's pretty much the only way you can kind of get any light piping to work, as you can see there. Um, you got some nice gold right there on the neck. You can get a little bit of molded detail right in there in the black section. And yeah, you got the chromed out arms right there with some nice molding. Going down the back, you can see more of that gold right there. You got the green and the red, got some silver, some red right there. He, he has a very fat, stumpy tail. It, it reminds me of the uh, the Fall of Cybertron Grimlock, the Hasbro version anyway, just a fat, stumpy tail. Uh, <laughs> on the legs here, you do get the nice transclearing plastic right there, as well as right here and right here. Looks really nice. And you got the gold claws right there, and on the back. And yeah, and the underbelly here. See some of the detail. Just kind of see some of the robot mode bits just kind of hanging out under there. And yeah, there you go. So articulation-wise, uh, his head can move up and down at this joint right here. It can rotate at this joint. can do a full 360. You also get some side-to-side -side movements 
right there. It's a pretty good side to side movement. Uh, the mouth can open, very wide. He does have the flamethrower in there, which is on its own hinge. So you can angle that up right there. Uh, his little arms are on a ball joint right here at the base. And you have an elbow joint as well. He has a wrist swivel and the claws can open and close. The claws are just one piece, they don't move individually. And the claws are a little on the sharp side, so do be careful with them because I've poked myself very well a couple times already messing with this toy. <laughs> so do be careful with his claws. So there you have that. Um, his back legs are on a ball joint, but just due to how everything works back here, you don't get a whole lot of range of movement. You can see how everything just kind of bumps into each other right here. You can get a little bit of outward movement. You can get some rotation. And then things will come undone as you do that. Oops. Shift that back. That's not supposed to move. Right. See, and that's one problem. Is sometimes this rear section doesn't stay tabbed together like it should. There we go, but legs can, you know, they can do a full 360. And you do have a swivel right there, and you have a double jointed knee, which still only gives you about 90 degrees of bend there. And the front claws here are on a swivel. We can move up a little bit, move down a lot. Uh, the whole foot itself can pivot up and down. Look at that, you can see it reveals some little molded details right there as well. And his tail is a bit articulated. You have a side to side movement right here and a side to side movement on the tip. So there you go. And mine doesn't like to stay together for whatever reason. You kind of see it. it kind of pushes itself apart. It's a little weird. But there you go. So you have all the possibility. So now for comparison, uh, what are we bringing in? Let's see, let's bring in Movie Grimlock. Yes, you can see how many scales there. You can see he's a bit, a bit bigger than Voyager Movie Grimlock. Uh, here he is with Planet X's, full of Cybertron Grimlock. And you can see how they scale with each other. There you have that. And we'll bring in his buddies here. Bring in Sludge. Actually, we'll put him here. There we got Sludge. There we got Slag. Actually, we'll put Slag over here. That and Swoop. Right there. And you can see the team so far. And they are a very nice looking set, though. They look really nice together. So there you have that. Oops, things are going to fall over. You stay. <laughs> Soup didn't want to stand or I wanted to put them. Anyway, get these guys out of the way. And uh, yeah, oh, one last comparison, of course, is the G1 Grimlock Hodges Pressures. Grimlocking Pressures. And there you have that. So there we go. Now, of course, you do get these two big Gatling guns right here, which are cast in black plastic. Yeah, some nice detailing to them. You do get some nice red transparent plastic right there. And they can store in dyno mode. And to do that, you can see they have these uh, interlocking tabs right here. So you just take them and you just push them together like that. And these pegs right here, they're on either side. We'll peg into these ports right here on his back. So you just line that up and you just push them down. And there you go. So now you got a T-Rex with Gatling guns on its back. Sure, why not? Dare I say, why not? So there you have that. He does have ports on his hands, but they're actually too big for anything. Like all these posts are, are just, they're too small. And I honestly thought maybe he could actually hold some weapons in dino mode, but he can't because all these all these pegs are, are too small. So I don't know what those ports are there for, but they're they're they don't serve any purpose. <laughs> but there you go. Got them all armed up right there. So uh, without further ado, we'll just get down to transformation, shall we? Let's let's just pop these off. Put them off to the side. Let me readjust a bit, excuse me. 
So now let's start with the tail here. So to begin, you want to take this whole rear section and you want to pull it back like that. Just extend that. You want to take this, this section of the tail, just bring that down on that hinge. And then you just want to split all this right here like that. And once you've done that, you want to take this section right here and just shift that down like that. And shift that down right there, just to kind of get stuff out of the way. And then you're going to take the leg and bring them out and around like that. And then you're going to take this bit right here and untab it. You can see a tab in the slot right there. So just take the foot and just swing it around. It's on a ratchet there. There you have that. And then you want to take the tail and there's a peg and a peg right there and there's a port and a port right there on the tail. So you just bring the tail in. You just line up those pegs. That. Tab that in. And then you just take this little bit right here, push it back and it just fills in that gap right there. Then you just rotate the leg at the thigh swivel. And there you go, you got a leg all done. Second verse, same as the first. Like this. And just swing it around. Untab. Swing the foot around. Take the tail, bring it in. Take it in in those two places. Right there. Take this bit, push it back. And then rotate at the thigh. And there you got the legs all done. So now moving on to the upper body. Excuse me while I readjust. There we go. So moving on to the upper body now. We'll just do the arms now. So just bring the arms down here. You want to take the claw, rotate it. And you want to take this whole suction right here and just bring that up. You can actually bring this back down. You can hold that down while you're swinging this up if you want. And once you do that, we can rotate the bicep swivel. Rotate the hand so it's oriented properly. Then you want to take this bit right here and it just slides down like that. And then you got an arm done. Second verse, same as the first. Bring that down. Rotate. You can hold this down while you bring this up, like that. Rotate the bicep, rotate the wrist so it's oriented properly, and just slide that down. And then you got the arms ready to go. So now you want to take the dino head here and you just want to untab it from right there. And this is on a double hinge, so you want to bring this back again, like that. Rotate the head 180. And just kind of bring the head up on this hinge as far as it will go. Then you just bring that down against his back. Then you just split this section right here. And you want to bring it up. You want to bring it up first, actually. Because you see it just it tabs in right into those grooves right there. So bring that up first and then split it. And these will rotate out to the sides like that. And then you want to kind of angle it forward. And then bring this armature back. Like that, and then when you swing this back in, that post will go into that port right there. So when you swing that in, you see that just tabs in and locks that in place. So same thing over here. You just take this and you just swing it forward and you bring it back. And then when you bring it back in, that will tab in right there. Like that. And then once you've done that, you just want to bring the arms up. As you rotate the hands and just kind of close them up like that. It's little dino hands. Like that. And then you take these shoulder sections here and you just rotate them up. Like that. There's no locking point for these and that's unfortunate because these do like to move around a lot when you're trying to pose them. And that's a bit annoying. But anyway, rotate these up into place right there. Get everything all straightened out. Make sure his body is extended all the way. And there you go. There you have Severo in his robot mode. And um, again, not the biggest fan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Not the biggest fan of his robot mode. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely fans project styled, but I don't know. Something about it just seems a little off to me. I don't know. I just... Again, not not the biggest fan of it, but um, we're getting close here on the head sculpt. Pretty nice head sculpt. It's just all cast in black. He does have he does have light piping. It doesn't really work all that well, but it's there. Um, I really don't know why they chose this color of transparent plastic for his chest. That just looks kind of odd and weird, and I don't. I, again, not not a fan. Of it, but um, love the gold they use on this figure. Very, very nice. And again, it's it's I don't know, not the biggest fan of this design. I mean, it does scream Grimlock, but I don't know. There's things about it. I don't know. It just seems off to me. I can't really put my finger on it. Um, the the Dino head, you can see, it doesn't really tab in anywhere, but it's fine. I mean, it's not loose or anything. It, it holds. It's hold. This is where my tongue stops working. It does stay in place, so I can give it a good vigorous shaking there. It doesn't really, you know, flop around or anything. So, no worries there. But yeah, there you go. And like I said, I really wish it was a locking point for these shoulders because you can see I'm just trying to like bring his elbow down. I'm just trying to straighten out his arm, and then I bring down the shoulder with it, and that's annoying. But, there you go. There you have that. And, of course, you can arm him up with his weapons. You have his G1 gun right here. You can plug that into his hand. Make sure you close that up. And he holds it, you know, not really all that securely. He doesn't really uh, have the tightest grip. But he can hold it. You can see the gun is just cast in black plastic there. With the trans clear and red barrels. Right there. You give him the sword. Again with that trans clear and plastic. Nicely molded. There you can hold the sword. Okay, just gotta get his hand there. Now the sword he actually does hold. The sword he holds very well. That he has a good grip on. But the gun, yeah. You can see it just kind of falls right out. And there you have that. Now, you can store the Gatling guns on him, if you wish. You have these, these tabs right here, these T-tabs, that will go into these grooves. Where's the camera so you can see what I'm pointing at? They go right into these grooves right here. So you just take them, and you slide them in. It's a very tight fit. I mean, you can see this groove actually goes in pretty far, but I've only been able to push it in that far. I mean, it'll hold, but that's as far as I can go with them. You can plug that into that side. Plug that one into that side. There you go. So you can have those hanging out right there on his back. Or if you want, you can have him actually holding the guns. Pop those out. Come on. Come on. Now you just take the section here, flip that down, and then bring the handle down like that. You can have him holding these guns. And these will actually go right around his hands like that. And again, these, you know, not the not the tightest grip on those guns. <laughs> but you can have him holding both of those if you wish. So you have options as to how you want to arm up your Grimlock right there. So you got that going on, and of course, you do get his weapon dude right here, Potato, 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 whatever the heck his name is, I don't know, his little weapon dude. So we'll take a close look at him, see the head sculpt, get some light in there, and see a very simple head sculpt, red chest, got some gold right there, We've got some little gold spikes, a little bit of red. Right there. It's got a little backpack. That's basically the handle for everything. Um, this piece right here, you can remove this side piece. And if you want him to hold that as a gun, you can totally hold that like a little cannon, if you wish. Um, this piece, though, I thought that maybe he could hold this as like a club or something, but this is actually too big to fit in his hand. So that that's not happening. But... There you have that. Now articulation for him, he can rotate his head. His head is on a swivel. It can also move 
up and down so you can get them all squirrel. You can totally have them doing that. You can look down. Uh, the shoulders are on a ball joint at the base and a hinge here so you get a little bit of wiggly waggly. You also have a transformation joint right here so you can move his arms back. You get outward movements. Rotation. Of course that inward and outward movements. Uh, you have a hinge right here at the elbow as well as a ball joint. So you get a nice range of movement there. Double jointed. Uh, nothing at the waist. He does have a uh, like an ab crunch just due to transformation. Uh, the hips are on a ball joint and the knees are on a ball joint and the feet are on a ball joint. You can get a little bit of ankle tilt, some up and down. There you go. And just for comparison, here he is with Sludge's little weapon dude right here. You can see he's a bit bulkier. Here he is with Slags, little, little weapon dude. He's a little bit bigger than him. And here he is with Swoops. Little weapon dude. That's just what I call them now. Little weapon dudes. <laughs> so there you have all the little weapon dudes. So I transformed the little weapon dude into a weapon. He's going to remove this backpack. You can see it just tabs in right there. So to transform him, you just want to rotate his head. Bring it down. You want to rotate his arm out the forearm right there. So those gold details are facing forward. And then you want to take the arms and bring them back like that. You want to take these panels right here and you want to swing them around. You do have to clear this little tab right there. Swing that around like that. And you can see this little groove that is made just for that little bit of molded detail right there. So swing that down, come over here, swing that down, like that. And then you just want to fold him up at the ab crunch right there. And then you want to fold his legs at the knee. And then you want to bring the legs up, like that. And there are tabs right here on the arms that will go into these slots right there. So just tab that in, tab that in. And you'll see one foot will hook into the other like that. And there you go. You're basically just folding them up into a little box. So then you just take this apart. Right there. Take that apart. And what you're going to do here is, you're going to take this section, and you'll notice there is kind of like a little, like a little, uh, you know, a little tab in there. You can see, and there is a notch right here on the post, and you just line that up and just push that together. And same thing here, you just line up that little, little uh, tab with that post, and he's throwing off my focus. <laughs> so you just line all that up, plug that in, and then you just take this and plug it into that port, and again, you got that tab in there, so you just line it up with... A little groove, plug it in, and there you go. So it's basically just like a big, uh, like club weapon. It just looks like a, it just reminds me of like a cinder block on the end of a pole, pretty much. <laughs> but there you go. There you have the weapon mode. Now this is what you can do is if you have the uh, the basic edition of this figure. But if you have the <sighs> come on, tongue. If you have the deluxe edition of this figure, you get the extra little weapon dude. So what you can do is, you can transform this guy. And he transforms the exact same way because it's the exact same figure. So just swing that around. Swing that around. Collapse the waist in. Hold him up at the knees. Bring the legs up. Tab that in, tab that in, boop, and then just hook the feet together. And I didn't tab that in. You try burn, you try burn, I can kill you too. You try burn. There we go. There you have that. So now what you can do is we can unplug this, like that, and what you do here is. You take this tab right here, it will go into this slot right there. And you can see there are little tabs right here on either side that will go into these notches 
on either side here. So you just tab that in there, and you just line these up. I don't know how you can see that, but you just line that up, and they'll go into those notches right there. And then you just take this guy, and you plug him in the exact same way. And you also have a tab and a slot here, and a tab and a slot here. And those will lock together as well. So you just line everything up. Like that. And then you just tab those together, right there. Like that. Push it all together, and now you just have a big battle hammer of dino justice right here. And that looks really cool. I really dig this. That is awesome. So you can have Severo here holding that. And this he does hold pretty well. So you kind of look him around. I mean, he'll drop it, but... It's, it's a more secure grip than, uh, than the guns, I will say that. So you have him with his big battle hammer right there. And, you know, you could totally have him armed up here. You could just have these things on his back right there. You can have him holding his gun. You can holster his sword. He does have ports on either hip right here. So you can plug that in and have him all armed up like that. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> I do dig that quite a bit. So, there you go. So, uh, I totally forgot to go over the articulation for this guy himself, so let me get all this out of his hands for now. So articulation-wise for Severo himself, his head is on a ball joint, so you can get some good wiggly-waggly movement there. The shoulders are on a ball joint at the base, so you can get some forward and backward movement. You do get full rotation, although the kind of junk on his back kind of gets in the way. You do have outward movement. You have a hinge right in there. Not a lot of outward movement, as you can see, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you do have a bicep swivel, double-jointed elbow, although it only equates to a 90-degree bend. Wrist swivel. Fingers can open and close. Due to transformation, you do have like an ab crunch going on here. Ratcheted waist swivel. Legs can go forward. Very high. You can go backwards pretty much all the way. Outward movements. You only get like three clicks of outward movement there. Ratcheted thigh swivel. Ratcheted knees. You can see you get under 90 degrees of bend there. Uh, the feet can pivot up and down. You can kind of move them back and forward a bit. And the foot itself is on a ball joint right there. So you do have some nice tilt. And again, some upward and downward movements. So There you go. And due to transformation, you have this inward knee bend. You could use it for something. I don't know, but hey, it's there. If you want to make use of it. So, there you have that. So, now for comparison. Here he is with Combiner Wars Voyager Prime. Just so you can see how he scales with the mainline stuff. You can see he's a little bit taller. A little bit taller at the head than a current Voyager. Uh, here he is with Voyager Movie Grimlock. You can see he's quite a... A little bit taller, very very much bulkier than movie Grimlock. Uh, here he is with Planet X's Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. You can see he's a little bit shorter than Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. And we'll bring in his buddies here. Let's see if we can get them all in shot here. I think it's like... There we got slug. Got, I mean sludge rather. What have I been calling him this whole time? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure already a hundred people in the comment section have already told me about it, but anyway. So there we have the team so far. And again, they look good together. Very nice looking set. Overall, though, so. 
There you have that. There you have that. And then we have that. And of course, here he is with G1 Grimlock because it's pressure. So pressure. There you go. And there you have that. Now, the last thing to talk about with the deluxe set is the throne. The throne of awesome. So, like I said, this is included with the deluxe version of this figure. And uh, I really like the throne. This, is, this was really the selling point for me. This is what made me spend the extra money because I really wanted the throne. Um, <laughs> there is the throne. Um, actually, very nicely done. You know, they really tried to, uh, to paint it up to make it look like just some rusted metal here. It looks very cool. Lots of molded detail on this. It looks very, very cool. Get up top there. Very, very nicely done. Just all around. And again, has that nice, uh, just rusted metal vibe going on. And you can see, it is just, you know, hollow in the back. But still, actually, I mean, still, despite it being hollow, it does have, you know, a little bit of heft to it. A little bit. But, there you go. So, of course, you can sit Grimlock on his throne. Remove these, and I'll just show you how I display him. So to sit him in the throne, you do have to take the dino head and rotate it outward like that. And the dino head is just going to go through this gap right here. So you just take him, get him into a sitting position here, just feed that dino head through there. Just bend his knees, and you're going to have to spread his legs out a bit, right there. And you can see the dino head just kind of poking out the back there. And there you go. There you have Grimlock sitting on his throne. Now, you do have these ports right up here. And what those are meant for is for the swords. So you can take his sword and plug it right there. And you can take the other Dinobot swords and plug them right there, plug that one, All right, no, that's going to get in the way, so we'll plug that one there. I'll take swoop sword and plug that oops, right there, like that. And obviously when, they're, uh, when their snarl comes out, the fist sword will go right there. But there you go, you can have that going on. <laughs> Which looks really cool. And you do have ports on either side here. So you can plug weapons onto. I just take his gun and plug it into here. The two big Gatling guns, what I do is there are ports on either side here as well. Or you can plug them up here. They do. They, they, they kind of bump into the swords. So me personally, I just plug them in here. So I plug that one in there. And I plug that one on this side and just have them angled up like that. And there you have that. And then I just give him his big hammer. It's like a big gavel. Right there. Oops. Get his hand properly. And there you go. And of course, what is a king? Without his crown. So there's his crown right there. You can see there's a little notch right here. And that is for his head crest. So then you just kind of line that up. And you just push that down onto his head. It's going to be a little hard to do. There we go. Give him his crown. And there you go. There you have <laughs> King Grimlock. With his giant gavel of dino justice. <laughs> Me, Grimlock, judge, jury, and executioner. So there you go. <laughs> and that just makes for an awesome display. That's really why I went in on this set, because just the display alone is like, just totally makes it worth it for me. So, <laughs> there you go. That's really, really cool. I really dig that. <laughs> you know, you can have his, uh, his loyal subjects here are just standing around him. Right there. 
if you want. Get their little, their little weapon dudes. Get those guys there too. Just have the whole team. There you go. <laughs> and that just makes for an awesome display. I love that. And that's why I went in on the uh, on the deluxe set. Because that just looks too cool. That just looks too, too cool. So, there you go. There you have Severo. They have everything that comes with the deluxe version of this set. And, uh... Yeah, very, very cool. Like I said, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of his dino mode. I'm not the biggest fan of his robot mode. But overall, though, the display here with the deluxe set was just too, too cool to pass up. Like I said, it's not my favorite version of Grimlock. It's not the best Grimlock that I own. I've, I've had better Grimlocks. Um, as far as I'm concerned, still nothing can dethrone this guy right here. I think he is the best Grimlock official or otherwise that exists right now. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, and Masterpiece Grimlock, don't get me wrong, Masterpiece Grimlock is, like, almost neck and neck with him, but I still, I still love this guy, I think he's amazing. But, um, yeah, like I said, definitely not my favorite Grimlock, official or otherwise, but, um, still, overall, though, this set is really, really cool. Now, the difference between the, uh, the regular edition and the deluxe edition is only $20, so for the extra 20 bucks, you get the crown... The, uh, the throne and the extra weapon dudes, you can make the full-on hammer. An extra 20 bucks, if that's worth it to you, to have those extra bits, is your decision to make. But um, I felt as though it was worth it, and that's why I went in on it. And uh, yeah, but very, very cool nonetheless. So yeah, just one more to go, man. Where's your snarl? We need the snarl. We need the whole set here. We need the whole... We need the king and all of his subjects here to get this complete, but... Yeah, very, very cool. So there you go. So if you would like a Severo or any of Fans Projects other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so check that out. And you can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below, so check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So... There is the Fans Project Severo, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, pour me in your face. Grimlock, I must speak with you. Whoa, what? Why? Why, why are you sitting on a throne? Me, Grimlock King. No. Okay. Anyway, I need you and your fellow Dinobots' help. What do you need for us? My extreme gratitude and the feeling of knowing you did a good deed. Hmm. Let me, Grimlock, think about it. Oh, by all means, take your- ah! No deal! You know, you could've just said no, that wasn't really necessary. Me, Grimlock, no. But me, Grimlock, king. Me Grimlock can do whatever me Grimlock want to. Yeah, well, me Optimus's head hurts now. And me Grimlock happy.